So a pretty big bombshell report came across my feed that I wanted to share with you guys. Russell Wilson is allegedly still using the audibles he had in Seattle with the Seahawks with the Broncos offensive line, the wide receivers, and the running backs. Guys, if this is true, I mean, this is capital C clown show stuff already, which already been an absolute clown show. I mean, this is becoming the party city headquarters of clown headquarters for the Broncos. So the report came out from Tyler Columbus, who grew up in the Denver area, went to CU, played for the Broncos, was on their 2015 Super Bowl team, now he covers the team, 92.5 the fan, uh, FM, excuse me, Altitude Sports Radio, Denver. And on the show today, he said, Russ is losing his mind out there. He's using audibles from the Seahawks. The guys don't know the audibles. He's using code words that the guys don't know. So I listened to the whole interview, not, not, not the interview, I listened to the whole segment, if you will, and... He said, no, I wasn't going to say anything. I wasn't going to bring this up to light, but I finally got enough people inside the front office or inside the organization who vouch for this being true, that Russell Wilson is, in fact, using audibles and terminology and jargon from his time with the Seahawks. What the fuck is going on? How can this be true? This can't be true, right? Russell Wilson's a lot of things. He's a lot of things. He's corny be a bit of a cheese ball at times but he's not dumb he's not stupid okay I really can't wrap my brain around Russell Wilson in November still using audibles from his time in Seattle now maybe he had the same like Omaha right he's got the same words and he just brought it over to Denver but I really doubt he's just whipping out these audibles that have never been introduced to this offense because how Right? He's not an idiot. He's not schizophrenic. He's not thinking he's in Seattle all of a sudden and he's having memory loss syndrome. No. Russell Wilson knows where he is. He is mentally sound, I believe. And so he's, he can't, right? He can't. There's no way. Now, Columbus was talking a little bit about the offensive line, right? Calling out maybe the hot linebacker or where the blitz is coming from. And the Broncos' offensive line hasn't been great. Uh, They've allowed 30 sacks so far this season, which is the sixth most in the NFL. So maybe you could find some connection of, well, they're not picking up blocks because they're not understanding what Russell Wilson is saying. And that might very well be true. I don't know if this is true or not. One, I'm not on the Broncos roster. I have no idea what audibles Russell Wilson is calling, what he's saying in the huddle or at the line of scrimmage. But... Would it blow my mind? Am I going to say this is absolutely fake news false? How can I? It's been that bad. And this is not the first instance of a similar-ish story, okay? Remember week one when Russ was having everyone yell pass or run on the Broncos sideline? Well, on the Seahawks sideline, Tyler Lockett was going up to their DB saying, hey, this is Russell Wilson's code for a go route. Right, telling their rookie quarter, uh, rookie corner Tariq Woolen, that's a go ball. Okay, it's not the first time there's been rumors or allegations of Russ almost like a pitcher, sort of tipping his hand a little bit, letting the other team know what's happening, because he's still stuck in his old Seattle ways. It, it, it's really hard to digest that this could be true, but damn if it is true, and he's really yelling out old audibles from Seattle. And everyone's looking around like, what is he saying? We don't, that's Arabic to us. We don't speak Arabic, right? I mean, another thing I want to get to now is Nahackett yesterday talking to the media. Eric Delilah, who covers the team, tweeting out, Nathaniel Hackett on where he wants to see Russell Wilson improve. Just continually owning the system. We want to build this thing around him. We want him to feel that and we want him to put we want to put him in positions that he can make plays and he's comfortable making plays. Hack it. Some free advice here. You're the head coach. Don't let Russell Wilson become the head coach. I'm all for building around your $245 million QB. But at this point, it's almost as if Hackett's a puppet and Russell Wilson is running the show. You can't have that. You didn't hire Nathaniel Hackett to be a babysitter. And that's what he's becoming 
if he lets Russell Wilson walk all over you, which we know Russ brings an entourage. He's got his own office. And was that a bit peculiar? Was that a bit odd back in the offseason? Absolutely. Tom Brady doesn't get that type of treatment even. But you're the head coach, Hackett. I mean, how, how, how redundant do I have to be when I say, do not let Russell Wilson walk all over you, call the shots, because it seems like this marriage, if you will, between Hackett and Russ has started to have some fractures the last couple of weeks, right? Some disagreements on play calling, not seeing eye to eye on their approach and offensive game plan for games. And I don't think your quarterback should win that battle, right? Maybe for some quarterbacks, maybe Russell Wilson is at that level. I don't think he is. We saw Aaron Rodgers sort of do that with Mike McCarthy in Green Bay. Rodgers was probably proven to be the correct one of those, of those two, right? But Wilson, in his first year in Denver, I know Hackett is a bit of a clown show right now, but Hackett, get your balls back, right? Be the head coach. Coach this team. Don't just stand up there and do and say, whatever Russ wants to do, that's our offense. He calls the plays now. I'm just here to make sure no one gets hurt. All right, who do you blame more for this season not being where we thought it would be come November 17th? Russell Wilson or Nathaniel Hackett? This is the big question I want to ask today. So everyone watching right now, let me know in the comments section because I'm very curious what the even sp what the split's going to be. I think it's going to be somewhat close. All right. Also, I saw this, and I thought while we're talking about Russ, we'll bring it up here. So remember last week or so when Pete Carroll said, we're doing great things right now with Geno Smith because he likes wearing the wristband, and there was some resistance to that before. And then Russell Wilson kind of clapped back the next day and said, we won a ton of games without wearing one. Well, now Russ is still wearing the wristband, actually. This was taken yesterday, and it's a little interesting because – it seemed like Russ was sort of doing it at first to send a message, but maybe you should wear the wristband a little bit more often, Russ, because clearly if the reports of you calling audibles in Seahawks lingo on the Broncos is true, well, to me, it sounds like you need a little helper, right? You need a little help calling the plays, not trying to memorize the whole playbook. So having a little cheat sheet on your forearm. And he's still rocking it, and I hope that this could be the difference maker moving forward here. I do have some good news. I know I've been a bit of a negative Nancy in today's video, and it's a little hard not to be when a bombshell report comes out that your starting quarterback is using audibles from his previous team in November, but at least we're not the Raiders. I mean, if you think it's bad in Denver, it is worse in Vegas. Producer Patrick, who's got it worse right now? Let me know. Raiders or Broncos? 100% the Raiders. The Raiders do, because... They are literally, like, the Broncos at least know they kind of suck, right? The, Hackett has said, we have no offensive identity. I mean, Mark Davis, Al Davis, Mark Davis is saying to Josh McDaniels, you're doing a fantastic job. So at least the Broncos can recognize we're sort of garbage right now. The Raiders are in denial, and they have two wins this season. So this Sunday is going to be fun. I'm trying to, find a, uh, trying to find a line out there that will let me bet on the tie, because I think major tie vibes from this Broncos Raiders game, right? It's really hard to picture one side winning. I have been really inaccurate on predicting Broncos games this year because I always think they're going to turn the corner and they just haven't. But I do think the Broncos win this game. Who do you guys think wins? Broncos Raiders, it's bad, but it could be worse. It could be the Raiders.